Is that right? Yes. Okay. Good. Um, all right then. So, um, what was I was going to ask a question this week? I can't remember what I was going to ask. Can anybody help me remember what my question was this week? It's to do with um, evolution and women. What was what was the question I was going to ask? Can you remember? Nobody can, I can't remember either, I've forgotten. I remember we were talking about uh, women and um, hunting and stuff like that. And um, how maybe um, maybe women were involved in, um, in hunting activities. And I actually put up um, an article on web class related to that but i've actually forgotten the question i was going to ask you nobody can remember that can they can't remember the question forgotten okay never mind doesn't matter we can get back to that eventually but remember later i expect um yeah i was going to ask you though guys um a lot of you, I mean, basically a lot of you, like particularly if you're thinking about um, you're dealing with culture and language, right? And one fundamental question you kind of need to ask is um, what makes humans different from animals exactly? Yeah? Why are animals human? And why are animals and humans different? And what's the, what's the big difference there, would you say? Any ideas? What's the big difference between animals and humans? Tell you what then, let's do a little bit of a, let's do a little bit of a, actually tell me what, you can hear me, right? Everybody can hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay, good, right, fine. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of a breakout room for you. Let me just go into uh, screen share first. Um, okay, let's see if we can say what makes humans and animals different. It's a nice simple question, right? But um, we should get a few different answers there, I guess. I mean, anything is okay. Just come up with some ideas. What you think is the big difference. And then I'll talk about um, some of the big ideas in the field of linguistics and cultural studies about what people think is the big difference. Okay, anyway, so that's a question, right? And let me just go out of there. And I'm going to go into a breakout room, give you a little chance to talk, because I think it's quite important that we do a bit of talking. How many have we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. So let's do, um, let's try five. No, let's try four. Let's try four groups and see how it goes. Okay, then. Breakout rooms coming up. Here we go. Okay, should be going through now. Okay, so that worked. That worked properly for a change. Yeah, that's a deep, deep question, isn't it? What's the difference? I'm just wondering what you'll what you'll say. Um, we mentioned cooking last week, mentioned the use of fire. I mean, it'd be nice if you sort of mentioned stuff like that again, come back to that. Um, but some of the ideas um, in the field suggest that what's the big difference between humans and animals? is actually that we cooperate more than 
other animals. So we're a kind of a more cooperative species. And I'll show you some, uh, some of the evidence to support that idea. Um, and a lot of that stuff comes from sociocultural theory, um, studies of historical change and the way our minds have changed over time. Um, and you know, part of it is that it seems that in many ways we are very similar to animals, right? But there are some things, maybe not that big actually, but some things that kind of set us apart. We are different in certain ways. Okay, so we'll see how we get, see how it goes. Um, I'm going to leave these up here for a second. I don't lose sight of that because last week I lost it. Okay, I'm going to give you a little more time because it is um, it is a big issue. And I think it really is kind of fundamental to quite a few of your ideas. Culture and language, music. Beauty, yes, beauty, that's a good one. So where did, um, where did the idea of beauty come from? I've got something to say about that, actually, I'll talk about it later. a little bit more time. Okay, so let's think about opening this up now. Okay. Here we go. And it'll be about one minute, I think. about 20 seconds. And should be coming up very soon. Okay, guys, right then. So I think, uh, I think we're all back, are we? Just about. Okay. And, um, okay, I know this is a very maybe funny question, difficult question, very deep, but I'm still going to ask it, right? Just to get started and thinking about some of these things, because I'm, I'm convinced it, it relates to many of your topics in a very deep way. So we're going to ask it. Um, okay, guys, so I've got my group one here. Room one is Haruka, Mimi, and Minami. How about you guys? What have you got? Hello? Yes. Uh, we thought uh, we have a language, but animals not have language, so it's different point. Yep. So, yeah. okay, so you think that is, so what, what yeah, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a big difference, right? So mm -hmm. language, right? Okay, carry on. And also the human have 
expression of faces, but they don't have it. Right. Yeah. Different emotion, emotions and stuff like that. You mean? Is it? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. What kind of what kind of expressions then? What kind of? Yeah. How how would you like you know? So what I mean how 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 are the expressions facial differences different between humans and animals exactly? Do you think? Uh, for example, uh, when we feel happy, yeah, yeah, we are smiling. But for example, dog or cat isn't don't do it. Right. So they are. They, they shake their uh, tail. Yeah, yeah. So he expressed the happy by it, I think. In, in different ways, yeah, okay. So we got more like sort of facial stuff yeah. going on maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe our faces are more expressive. That's a good mm -hmm. point. Yeah. Anything else? Um, no. That's it. Okay, good. That's uh, it's interesting. So language and so it's, so it's an expression, then, is it? Like language, yes. the way of expressing yourself, um, expressing your ideas and express your emotion. Mm -hmm. And fa faces are also ways of expressing something. Yes. So they're both kind of expressive power. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. So that's one idea. Uh, good. And how? And my room two is Kurusu, Niu, and Yuna. How about you guys? Okay. Uh, we think. Oh. <laughs> we agree with. Minami and yeah. people have language, but animals don't have language. And we have reason, but they don't have reason. Reason. Re reason. Interesting. Yes. Mm -hmm. So how, how would you explain that, that we have reason and animals don't have reason? Uh, uh, we can control our um, we can control our emotion, emotions but they can't mm, interesting i mean that's kind of relates to, to them in a sense because they they're saying the other group is saying that um, we can express our emotions mm -hmm. with our face and, and you're saying we can actually control our emotions as well. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. So control power. We can use our reason to control things better. Interesting. So how, do, how did that happen then? How did we develop that ability? How? Yeah, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. It's a very difficult question. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah but that's that's an interesting idea though like so we're able to control our emotions and um you can you give examples of how we use reason how we use reasons yeah um mm. mm. uh, i think Um, when when we when we should put up with something, we use reason. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So again, it's kind of control of control of emotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Actually. Yeah. Okay. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Um. That's, yeah, that makes sense, actually. I'm trying to think what that is. Okay, get back to that later then, maybe. Okay, thanks.
And uh, how about um, my room three is Sara and Honami. How about you guys? So our idea in the how we communicate and animals use eye contact and like howling yeah. to communicate. But people use um language and face expressions and like how how we use um, and the shape of mouth and like that. So so again, it's kind of the way the way we express ourselves. Yeah. Yes. Right. That's interesting. And so, we all write. Yeah. So how did that happen then? I mean, how did, how did we get that ability? <laughs> so I think it's very um connected to how people developed. Like we we talked last week. Yeah. Building fire, standing up and and like walking straight and like that. But <laughs> Right. Yeah, interesting. Okay. So basically, it's um, the way we express ourselves is different. Yeah. So we've got different ways of expressing ourselves. Um, and somehow that kind of emerged in our history. Okay, good. And let me just ask uh, Moe and Sarah for their ideas then. Yes. Um, we think that language is of course different between humans and other animals mm -hmm. but i think the purpose of living is different um other animals are uh, trying to live live and humans are looking for their own roles separately um mm, they are and then uh, ah they are very concerned about their role in society. No, like, mm, they, uh, some people read self-help books. So I think humans, humans are looking for their own roles in Sorry, yeah, interesting. So you're saying that like um, maybe humans are more kind of focused on on their role in society, yeah. fitting, in, fitting into society mm -hmm. in some ways. Yeah. So what about animals then? Do they do that? I think they are their purpose is just live so, uh, mm, live to eat something so their their purpose is just live <laughs> I think. yeah and I, and I guess you know maybe, maybe they're sort of fitting into their society but it's maybe not as complex um, as as human uh, society yeah. And so we have got a much more complicated uh, path ahead of that. Okay, good. So basically, most people, I think, are, are talking about like expressions, right? The way we express ourselves um, and um, speaking language as being kind of one of the big differences. I mean, there's other things as well, uh, which we might get back to later. Uh, but what about language then? How did language begin? Do you think we kind of discussed this before? But any, has anybody got any ideas about how language started? I mean, what about, say, for example, the group one is Haruka, Mimi, and Minami? How about you guys? How, how do you think? How do you think language began?
what about if I put it in a slightly different way? Do you think do you think animals have anything like language? Anybody? How about that? I mean, like sort of, you know, do you think animals have anything like language and do you think like it in, came out of that? Or is there something that like, is a big difference? What about, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just, I'll, take, I'll just show you some other stuff, right? Um, that I've been working on. And um, I'll just give you some ideas of this, hopefully. Let me just take this in here, right? Um, I mentioned this guy Rangham last week, right, about the, the cooking and everything. Uh, let me just um, do that for a second. Let's see if take this out. Okay. Um, so this guy is basically saying that, you know, cooking and fire kind of started this. But it's like, even if you think there's cooking and fire, right, was the start of it. It's like, you still think, well, why? Why did they, why were we able to get fire? Um, and you know what made us able to control fire when other anim other animals didn't. You know, it seems like other animals are afraid of fire, whereas human beings kind of were able to control it and start cooking, get calories, less time cooking, uh, stomachs get smaller, bigger brains, softer food, shape of our mouths could change, right? Um, and it still kind of makes you think, well, where was where was this language in all this, right? Um, and it's like, you have to remember that I say 200,000 years ago, uh, when we become modern humans, homo sapiens, um, our mouths are basically like the mouths we have now, right? exactly the same as they, as they are now. Um, so it seems like language, right? Language must have been evolving for a very long time. Yeah. And, um, you know, Chomsky says no. Um, it's very sudden. You get universal grammar maybe 50, 50 60,000 years ago. Um, so I don't know if that's, uh, it doesn't make sense to me. Right? Can't be true. But anyway, um, we're involved for speaking. And yes, yeah, so you get this kind of idea about language evolution, right? Uh, Chomsky's idea is that language evolved very suddenly, right? And it's random, right? There's no reason for it. Yeah, it just happens to, it just happens, right? Accidentally. Um, so until like, you know, about 200,000 years ago, humans are basically like chimpanzees and gorillas. We don't have reason, yeah? Yeah, people mentioned reason, um, which gives us the ability to control our emotions and express ourselves, right? Um, and so, you know, Chomsky is saying that universal grammar happens about 50,000 years ago, right? And then this universal grammar gives us reason, yeah, gives us the ability to think. And I, I'm not sure that's true, <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe, can't say it's not true, but you know, 50,000 years ago, for accident, by accident, right? Random mutation, just an accident. Um, up until that time, we're just like gorillas, like chimpanzees, we're not able to think, right? We don't have reason, we don't have language, we have nothing more like animals. So 50,000 years ago, um, so we're just like animals, but, right, we're living on the ground. <laughs> right? We're living on the ground, we're walking around on two legs. Um, we, can, we can run long distances. We control fire, right? So we got, we're just like, we're just like animals. We have no reason, we've got no language, just like chimpanzees, gorillas. But so why do we, why are we able to control fire? Yeah, because that's like at least a million and a half years ago, we're controlling fire. And also our mouths are perfectly evolved for human speech. Yeah. 
you know, like all, already totally like this now, right? Um, 200,000 years ago. And so then, then, so Chomsky says, then universal grammar suddenly pops into our heads by random mutation for no reason, all of a sudden, um, and it's purely grammatical, except it's not really purely grammatical, it also helps us think, it gives us reason, yeah? So it wasn't really purely grammatical. So that's kind of the Chomskyan idea about how language evolves. And then you've got the uh, cognitive linguistics view, okay? Cognitive linguistics, very often this is related to sociocultural theory. And, uh, what's happening? Okay, here we are here, uh, what's happening? Yeah. Okay, um, and you've got the cognitive linguistics idea of language evolution, right? And we talk about people like Thomas Sallow and people like that. Um, and that is more that language evolution is very gradual. Yes, yeah, so it's not sudden. So Chomsky is saying it's very sudden, it just pops into our heads about 50,000 years ago for no reason, a kind of miracle. And then there's another miracle that our mouths are also perfectly evolved. So there's two miracles, yeah? Um, the cognitive linguistics idea of language evolution says, no, that's not true. Um, human ancestors left the trees and started walking around on the ground about 4 million years ago, yeah? Um, so we come out of the trees about four million years ago, and that's a long time ago, right? So Chomsky's saying, you know, really modern humans 200,000 years ago, um, language, evolution, universal grammar is about 50,000 years ago, yeah? Um, the cognitive view is gonna be saying something like human ancestors leaving the trees, coming out of the trees, start walking around two legs, um, about four million, even four million years ago. That's a lot longer. Yeah, um, and then we needed ways to. We need to find ways to survive out of the trees. Right? So we don't have the protection of the trees. Right? Like monkeys are in the trees. Like, yeah, um, and um, we needed different abilities. Now, one suggestion. All right, is that the big difference, right, the big difference between humans and animals is that we are more cooperative. Yeah, so cooperation skills, we're just more cooperative. And so maybe that goes back a long way, that we cooperate more than other animals. And because we're trying to cooperate, we develop certain skills, maybe expressive power, could be facial expressions, right? We're telling people, right? We're giving people hints about our feelings and so on, right? Um, using facial expressions. And then we learn to communicate. We speak because, oh, yeah, you know, we learn to speak over time because we're better at cooperating, we're trying to cooperate with each other. And so um, language is a tool for cooperation, essentially. And yeah, eye contact and things like that, howling and the way we express ourselves is different in that sense. And out of our cooperate, because we're able to cooperate, we get a more complex society. And our social organization becomes more complicated. 
So anyway, we learned to as a cooperative, we learned to use fire, we learned to cook, our brains get bigger, um, and our ability to communicate gradually improved. We had more spare time, with less time chewing. So the shape of our mouths could change as we digest food more easily, and our mouths, mouths evolved for human language. So like our mouths evolving for human language um, would be a very, very slow process, starting sometime millions of years ago, yeah? Um, nobody knows when, uh, but maybe, you know, maybe we start using symbols, gestures um, millions of years ago and then maybe a little bit later we start using words and then we start putting words together and then we start making grammar eventually right i mean nobody knows but it's just the, the thing is that because it evolves slowly right it happens slowly we're speaking over millions of years, probably, right? We're, we're trying to speak over millions of years. As we're, food is getting softer, we can get the calories more easily without so much chewing. We don't have to spend so much time. And then over, again, a very, very, very long time, over a very, very long time, our mouths, shape of our mouths can change. Um, so they become like this. And then they become like this about 200,000 years ago because we've been trying to speak for a very, 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 very long time. Yeah, we've been try using, using speech to communicate for a very, very long time. And so then 200,000 years ago, our mouths perfectly evolved for speaking makes sense. Yeah, okay, anyway, let me just take this through. Let's see this chomp the problem with Chomsky's idea. Um, how could we survive on the ground if we're basically the same as chimpanzees, right? I mean, if we, if we have no, no better skills than chimpanzees and we're not living in the trees, we have no protection, you know, how do we do that? Well, we did it with fire. So then it's like, how do we, you know, it's why, what, make, <laughs> what, made us, what made us able to control fire then, right? Um, it seems like we have some kind of mental ability. Uh, you know, I have to remember we're weaker than animals. We didn't have big teeth or dangerous claws. Yeah, we couldn't run very fast. We're very slow. Uh, we're very slow compared to uh, animals. How do we survive, right? I mean, think about other animals. They're much stronger. You know, they're much faster. They've got bigger teeth, their claws, and stuff like that. We must have some big advantage. Um, and it seems that it was probably some kind of mental advantage and maybe related to cooperation, yeah? Um, maybe cooperative skills, right? So that's one of the ideas. And if you've got cooperative skills, then you wanna communicate, um, you wanna use language, you wanna use facial expressions and so on. So, you know, maybe we're better at communication, yeah? From a long time ago. And maybe reason, as you suggest, the yeah, ability to think, um, was developing faster earlier on. So better using tools maybe, yeah? So, but some kind of big mental advantage, it seems. Not just sitting around waiting for universal grammar, yeah? which doesn't make sense. So some kind of mental advantage that keeps improving over time, okay? Um, and like, you know, if language ability just pops into our head less than 200,000 years ago, as I've suggested, why are our mouths perfectly evolved for human language? That doesn't make sense, right? It really doesn't. I mean, how, it's not possible, right? Um, because 200,000 years ago, modern humans are fully evolved, right? We look exactly the same physically, mouths are exactly the same 200,000 years ago. So, you know, if universal grammar just pops into our head, giving us language, giving us reason, that's two miracles, right? That's two, two, that's two miracles. Universal grammar pop, popping into our head is a miracle, and the fact that our mouths are already perfectly evolved is also a miracle. Kind of two miracles, surely, yeah? Two miracles, nah, I don't think so.
Yeah. Universal grammar appears for no reason, and our mouths are already perfectly evolved for human language. This doesn't make sense. It must be a slow process, a very, very slow process. Um, and there must be some kind of mental advantage before right, language evol evolves. Maybe something to do with uh, with, with, to do with cooperation. Reason. Hmm. Anyway, um, here's modern, so you see monkeys and chimpanzees and stuff like that. You see it's evolving here. And then these are modern humans, 200,000 years ago, they're the same as us, right? Exactly the same as us today, except that we have different tools. <laughs> we have the same mouth, the same bodies, everything's the same, yeah? Okay. Um, so it seems that, you know, we needed to develop intelligence, cooperation, tool use to come out of the trees. Right? And now you guys have mentioned your expressive powers, um, the way we use facial expressions, and words and language and so on. Um, we have a different sense of our place in society and the way we cooperate, maybe. Yeah. Um, control of fire and tool use by about two million years ago, it seems. Right? At least one and a half million. So that's a long time, right? Physically nearly the same as us. And brains are almost as big as ours. Mouths not as well evolved for language at first, right? but over time, they become better and better and better and better and better for language. So that suggests we must have been trying to speak. Yeah, we must have been trying to speak, must have been using language, because otherwise our mouths are not going to change. Right? Um, you know, say a million years ago, their mouths are more like gorillas than, than ours. So over time, it changes. So our mouths evolve for human speech. How? Well, because we were speaking right we must have been speaking right trying to speak for a very long time as we were cooking our food getting softer food um our mouth, our mouth shape can change and so on okay oops what was that bit yeah they must have been trying to speak and the better speakers had an advantage right if you're good at communication you had a better chance of surviving yeah, the ones who are not so good at communication, the ones who are not so good at speaking, didn't live. So communication ability, cooperative ability, was key to survival. Okay, anyway, it's up to you. I mean, basically, that's, I think the choice is either language was very sudden or it was gradual, right? Sudden is Chomsky, right? Sudden, Chomsky says it's very sudden. Universal grammar pops into her head for no reason and just happens to have perfectly evolved mouths. Or it's gradual, it takes, it takes place over a very, very long time. We start off with some kind of mental advantage, maybe cooperation. And out of that, we're trying to cooperate, trying to speak, trying to communicate. And over a very, very, very long period of time, um, as we develop the ability to control fire and so on, um, we are cooking our food, we're trying to speak as an advantage for the speakers, and over time, the shapes of our mouths can change. Anyway, um, what I would say is that nobody says that, nobody denies gradual physical evolution, right? I mean, if I said, for example, um, you know, I mean, like this happens very slowly, right? This happens very slowly. If I said, for example, you go directly from this to this, right, physically, you'd think I was crazy, right? You'd think I was a complete lunatic. Um, you know, if I said, oh, suddenly, human body shape totally changed. 
<laughs> I mean, you think I was a complete lunatic. Yeah. So nobody's going to say that, right? Nobody's. So everybody's going to say physically. Yeah, definitely physically. Look, little bit, little bit, little bit, very slow, very, very slow. In millions of years is an evolution. Physical evolution takes place until 200,000 years ago. And then we're modern and we kind of stop evolving in that sense. Yeah. But it's gradual, right? Nobody thinks it goes suddenly, right? Um, suddenly from this, oops, from this to this. Nobody would say that. Yeah. Who denies gradual linguistic evolution? Right. That's what, you know, that's what the Chomsky's ideas are, that it's not gradual. Yeah. That linguistic evolution isn't gradual. Um, that it just happens by two miracles, but two miracles, one that UG pops into our head, gives us grammar, um, gives us reason, as you guys said, reason, the ability to think for ourselves. Um, and also is another miracle that our mouths are also, for some reason, already perfectly evolved for speech, physically. Uh, anyway, that's what Chompsians say. Um, otherwise, you think language evolution was very gradual. Um, human ancestors left the trees and started walking around the ground about four million years ago. We needed ways to fi find ways to survive out of the trees uh, because we lost the protection of the trees. We know different abilities. We developed our cooperative skills. Yeah? So we cooperated to survive. Um, we're no longer in the trees, we're walking around. Um, we don't have, we're not, very, not, not that fast, we don't have very many advantages, physical advantages, we just don't have them. So we needed to develop mental advantages and cooperative abilities. Yeah? And human language developed very gradually as we used it as a cooperative tool. And I think you, people, you, you guys, are, some of you guys are saying that um, facial expression, yeah? Facial expression looks like we've got more facial expression than, than animals. Um, I think that fits this, right? that you know over time we're cooperating we're using we're more expressive right um we're more we're expressing ourselves in, in kind of uh, in better ways in lots in lots of different ways speaking gestures facial expressions and so on body language yeah um we just get really good at it because that's our big advantage over the animals that's our survival uh, tool, I suppose. Then we used you, we learned to use fire. We learned to cook. Our brains got bigger. We got more calories, right? Got more calories and food. Um, and as this is happening, our ability to communicate gradually improved. And I think our ability to communicate in, in, includes, as you guys suggest, facial um, face. face, uh, I can't think of the word, what is it? Um, expression, that's right, facial expression is a big part of it, okay? So yeah, I, you know, I agree with you, right? That's, but it seems that maybe before that, there's some kind of, you know, cooperative ability, which is the key to our evolution. And we have more spare time as we spend less time chewing, as we were talking about last week with the, with the cooking. Um, and because we're eating softer food, we're spending less time um, chewing. Then the shape of our mouths can change over a very, 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 very long time. Not suddenly, yeah. So our mouths, our mouths were then able to evolve for human language. And by 200,000 years ago, they had completely evolved for human language. And I think maybe 200,000 years ago, maybe we had human language perfectly evolved. Why not? Don't know, but there you are. Um, anyway, any problems with the gradual evolution idea? Um, 
one problem might be that some people say that our human brain size increases very rapidly and suddenly. Yeah. Um, apparently, some people saying that's not true, right? That our, our brains didn't actually, the brain size didn't increase very rapidly. It was gradual. So maybe that isn't a problem with the gradual evolution idea. Okay, so what makes human different? Now, now I'm going to say this because this is kind of, I think, key to lots of. Actually, let me tell you what, let me just come out for a second. Um, let me come out of here. So, what do you think of that, guys? Do you see the point about um, gradual and sudden, right? Do you get that? Do you understand that? Do you see what I'm saying? That's a big, that's a big difference. Um, the Chomsky is saying it's very sudden, universal grammar. And the other guys, the cognitive people, um, saying no, it's going to be ordinary cognitive ability involving cooperation, and it's just a gradual ev evolution of language. Any comments on that? Anybody, anybody um, agree with Chomsky? Nobody's saying anything. Ah, anybody? Anybody think Chomsky's right? That universal grammar popped into our heads about 50,000 years ago? I think that idea kind of like strange. My yeah. idea is like maybe humans started to point out something or like Mm, just like shout, shout or cry to communicate with someone to hunt, and then it it starts to be a language. But <clears throat> maybe I think there is a boss or leader in the group. And maybe he or she leads to create a language. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I, I think I agree with you as well, actually, on that. Um, yeah, I think it could probably, and again, he's, and he's, he's suggesting it's kind of it's a gradual process. It comes from from simple um, shouting, making up noises, for example, um, simple word commands. Um, and maybe before that you had gestures of some kind. Um, so it's a kind of, um, it's a slow, uh, gradual process, I think. Yeah, I think that, um, I think I kind of agree with that actually. And like, it's interesting you say about the, um, about the boss, right? Uh, that the boss maybe leads in a sense, right? leads the development of language. Right um, now, I think that's a really interesting idea because I mean I agree with that actually in a sense. You think well, some kind of there's going to be some individuals right who are kind of driving this right in control right leading society in some way, leading these communities right. Um, so who is that going to be though, right? Who are the who are these bosses? Do you think? Mm, maybe it starts from a father in a family, and then maybe two or three families get together and they go hand. And then maybe I think the boss will would be more like with much muscles and. <laughs> <laughs> And like, or maybe older person. Hey, okay, All right. That's interesting, actually. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, the person who get much more animals than anyone. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Yeah, because they're out hunting, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, and they. I mean, like they particularly um, this idea about like this long distance running. Yeah. Did I mention that? 
uh, people are saying like when we when we started uh, coming out of the trees, we we're standing up on two legs, right? And we lose our hair, but we we're not we no longer have fur. We're wearing clothes and things like that, and so we become very good at long distance running. Right? We can run very long distances, and uh, we can chase after um, big animals, um, and maybe we're cooperating to kill the animals, and then we bring them back. Right? We bring them back, and they get cooked. They, the, the food is then cooked when we come back to the house. Um, so in that sense, I guess it makes it makes a lot of sense. If it seems to be logical, right? That you think, oh, the guy who's this this guy who's hunting, um, he's the boss. He's got big muscles, <laughs> stuff like that, right? He's got good hunting technique. That he would be the boss. That makes sense to me. I can I can certainly understand that. Um, can you think of any other possibilities that maybe maybe the leader of communication in this sense, um, the leaders in terms of development of language, were maybe not these big, muscly guys hunting. Maybe it was somebody else. Mm. Uh, or like maybe a all this person who who can get voices from a god ah right yeah, yeah okay so the old person back in back in the um house in the home home area yes maybe somebody who's very old uh who doesn't um who doesn't go hunting um yes who kind of is communicating with the spirits Yes, yes, yeah, I mean that. Yeah, that's really interesting, actually. Um, and, you know, you wonder how that, I mean, you know, you have these sh shamans uh, in different societies, so it kind of um, makes sense. Good. So maybe, maybe the people developing the language were not the ones hunting. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Because the hunting is a bit like, you know, that's like ordinary animal behavior, isn't it? Yeah, animal, yeah. animals go hunting. So maybe the, um, maybe the people who are developing language were not uh, the ones hunting. Maybe they were back in the home area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, interesting. So maybe some kind of old person who um, has some communication with the spirit world is that going to be a man or a woman i think man why <clears throat> because in japan actually there there was a chemical for is close close to a god but there's not any examples without that so maybe men is more possibility than women to be like spiritual leader and yes yeah okay that's interesting but it's like i mean but himiko does exist or at least that's 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 at least a legend right that she was like the priestess yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, and also, and also, I think there is there is a history of um, spiritual leaders in Japan as who are women. Oh, really? Yeah, you have got these. Um, I think Honami knows better than me. Actually, um, is it Itako and people like that? Is it? Yeah, but I'm. Um, I <laughs> I don't know much about Itako. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, no. But, but they, they, I think there is a tradition of um, like the the people who communicate with the spirit world um, are very often um, are very often women. I think in Japanese history. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I mean, what about? I mean, I think we, I think we talked about this before, didn't we? What about the if you go to uh, a jinja, you know, a, a, a shrine in Japan? Um, those very often it's young girls working. Yeah. What what are they called? Miko. 
Miko, right? Yeah. And what does that mean? Well, I, I don't really know. But I think they're like assistants of the priest. Yeah, now they are, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think, orig I think originally, though, they were like, um, if you look at the kanji for, for Miko, it's actually like it shows us like there's a, there's a connect, a, a go between, right? Oh. Go between the human world and the spirit world. So I think maybe, you know, maybe there's some stuff like that. I've mentioned also, um, um buddhika in the tradition of um you know british uh, history um buddhika shall i just write that down write it down um you can you can do it you can do a search for this actually see it. oops um buddhika buddhika also it's like i think it's called bodhisattva Bod See, yeah, as Latin, I think. Um, it's like a queen, um, very violent, uh, <laughs> very violent queen of the British uh, about 2000 years ago. Yeah, Boudicca, kind of uh, amazing character worth checking out. But anyway, so women, women, you know, may have done something like that, right? And also they may have been hunting, right? Uh, there's certainly examples of women leaders in military situations. Um, I mean, the, some of the best examples would be people like, I don't know, um, say for example, Joan of Arc, right? Um, who is like leading the French against the British. It's kind of unusual, but it's, you know, it de de definitely does happen. So it's possible that women would have um, played a role in spiritual, matters maybe communicating um with the spirit world as Salah suggests as an idea maybe it was men maybe it was old men but it could have been women yeah and i think there is a tradition in japan of women going between right check out the kanji and uh, going between the, it's like you know go between right uh go you know miko is like if you look at the kanji there it's going between the uh the spirit world or two different worlds i suppose separated worlds the spirit world and the um the real world the living world and the dead world i suppose or something i don't know um anyway two different worlds um so women may have had a part to part to play there but we talk about I mean, if the women were in at the home, right? At home, looking after the children and cooking, would that have helped the development of language? I mean, how about if I like, say, let's say, say, for example, it's true that the men are going out, right, hunting, um, and the women are staying at home with the children um, and doing the cooking. Would, that, would there be any kind of language evolution going on in that situation? Would there be a need for better communication in that kind of situation? I heard women did they pick up fruits from a tree and uh, what leaves or or the shells from the ocean mm -hmm. and also I think maybe there are some children around out. Uh, women so maybe there are some communication between them or among them right and it's like i mean so, and quite a, quite a, some of you guys said that you know the purpose for living and a role in society uh finding your role in society where you've got more compl complicated societies um i guess you know that does create the need for better communication um just like sort of 
I mean, I, I guess in a way, if you've got people in the, in the community at home, is a more complex arrangement. It's more complicated as a society than, say, just going out and hunting, because right? hunting is, an, in a way, is very simple, right? Um, there's not that much to communicate. It's sort of like a level of animal, right? Whereas the home situation is kind of much more like a real society, maybe, yeah? And maybe to fit into that kind of society, as some people mentioned, right? Finding your purpose of living, uh, finding your role in society. Maybe you need more complex language skills to do that. So maybe uh, language was evolving more in the home situation than it was in the hunting situation, right? So I mean, for example, hunting maybe is quite simple, but then you come back to the home and maybe you want to tell stories about the hunt, right? Tell the other, <laughs> tell the other people stories about how great and strong and brave you are, right? Tell these amazing stories around the fire. So, you know, I, I, I kind of imagine anyway, I don't know if it's true, of course, right? But I imagine that, you know, maybe there was more speaking going on, right? more communication going on in the home situation than in the hunting situation, right? And that like language was evolving more in the home environment than it was in the hunt environment. I don't know, of course, right? but just, I don't know, to me, it makes sense. I'm not sure what you think. And, um, and also about like, if you're cooking, right? If you're cooking, doesn't, doesn't cooking actually maybe require better language skills? or encourage better language skills? Hornami, what do you think about that? I think this is your topic. Or maybe Moy as well, actually, your topic, because it's, it's, um, it's actually a kind of hospitality thing. Do you think the need, I mean, just cooking, if cooking is really important, um, doesn't that maybe require better language ability. So like, do you mean like when you're cooking, you need more skill to communicate? Like Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> my idea is unlike hunting, going hunting, yeah. cooking is like the thing that you can do in person. Oh, no, like, um, I don't know. If the thing you can do is by yourself. Ah, uh, right. <laughs> so you, then you don't need to communicate. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not sure like how the society and family worked in the in ancient times. So, Maybe like they were cooking together. Yeah. But I'm not sure so. <laughs> but it's like, but it, yeah, I mean, that's a good point, right? But it's like, if you think um, cooking, our ability to cook now, right? we've learned lots of things right, by cooking. Yeah. yeah? So doesn't it, it doesn't it suggest that these ancient cooks mm -hmm. right, were passing their skills on Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I, I don't, I mean, obviously we don't know, right? But it's like, to me, it seems that, you know, if, um, if, if cooking was becoming important, mm -hmm. right? And the men, say, say the hunters, say the men were the hunters, right? Usually, um, they wanted better cooking. You know, they, sort of, the, the cooking was really important. And so then maybe the women were trying to improve their skills. Mm -hmm. right? And so then teaching other people, those maybe their daughters or something like that, right? Or other, other women in the area, it's like spreading those, those cooking skills um, would have been a kind of very important social activity um, and would have 
kind of improved the culture. Yeah, it would have like helped the um, help the culture to actually evolve. Yeah, so the culture would be evolving in that situation, which maybe wasn't happening in the hunt situation. Oh. Right? Where the hunt maybe was kind of very simple. Uh -huh. Yeah. Look at, um, look at this and throw there. Yeah. Something. And it's like, particularly very early on, yeah. they didn't even have, um, you know, proper weapons, right? Uh -huh. They'd have stones and sticks, right? And they'd just be running after these big animals until the animals get really tired and collapse, right? Um, and then because, because humans uh, have an advantage in long distance running. Mm -hmm. And then so they just smash, smash the animals over the head or something with a stick mm -hmm. or a rock and then carry it back. Right. So that's it could have been very, very simple. Mm -hmm. right? And obviously, I guess if you're, if you're improving, obviously they did improve. So there would be communication would it would be required. But at the same time, right, maybe more so, maybe cooking was actually evolving. Mm -hmm. Right, cooking skills were evolving maybe faster in a more dynamic way early oh. on. Yeah, and yeah. so perhaps the need for speaking was actually greater in the home environment than it was in the um, in the um, the hunting environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe women were kind of leading this, leading the, the evolution of language. Um, more than perhaps the men were. It's a possibility. Right? Yeah. I don't know. Right? Nobody knows. But it seems. It's, I mean, like I mean, to me, it's like you. If you say if they, first of all, you think okay, the hunters, right? The hunters, the big muscular men, were the leaders, right? And then you think, well, maybe, but maybe not, right? Maybe the leaders in these terms, in terms of driving evolution. Right, in terms of helping the culture to evolve, maybe the real leaders there were, in fact, the women. Possibility, yeah, nobody knows, but you know, I'm just gonna leave it out there. Let me just go back in here for a second because I want to just get back to um, what am I doing? That's right, isn't it? Okay, yeah, I want to go back to this. What am I doing here? What happened there? Why is doing that? Okay. Um, okay, this is Tomasello, right? And I just mentioned a couple of things here because we kind of covered some good points there, I think. Um, call him Mike, right? This is the origins of human communication. So he's talking about the, um, the beginning of language. Now, I'll just tell you this, this guy, you know, Tomasello, he's, um, he's very anti-Chomsky, right? He's very anti-Chomsky, which I am in a way, I'll be honest, right? But I mean, just to be honest, um, or, origins of human communication, cultural origins of human cognition, right? You're talking about reason and so on. Um, how that started. Uh, why are we different from animals? Um, you know, animals mostly stay in the jungle. We have technology, right? So we've obviously got big advantages there. Um, we've got certain communication systems, expression, as you guys said, facial expressions. Um, linguistic expression and so on, um, which is different. We have social organizations, we're talking about the home, uh, cooking in the home environment, you know, we've got different stuff going on. We're definitely different. Uh, how did it happen? Well, you know, as I said, Chomsky says it suddenly appeared in our brains as universal grammar, which allows us to think, which gives us reason, but it happens very suddenly about 50,000 years ago. I think that is completely wrong. I mean, it's just, it's impossible to believe that, right? Mm -hmm. Honestly, I believe, I think it's just absolutely impossible to believe that. And he's saying it happens certainly no more than 200, 300,000 years ago, right? It's happened very recently. And it happens for no reason, it's random, right? Absolutely no reason, random mutation. Right? That's random mutation, sudden. Yeah, um, sudden and for no reason. Why did it happen? No, no reason. <laughs> no, I mean, why did it happen? No, no reason. Do right? you believe that? Um, and by the way, it also allowed us to think, he says, right? It gives us reason. 
right? Universal grammar is supposed to be this special grammar thing, but it also allows us to think. So isn't it just to do with thinking? No, it's universal grammar. I don't know, I'm not sure. Um, is it random and for no reason? Okay. Um, this is Homo sapiens, well over 50,000 years ago, 200,000, 250,000 years ago, modern humans, right? Uh, at least 200,000 years ago, 50,000 years ago is a short time in evolution, right? Very sudden. And then, you know, at already at that time, they're physically identical to us. Bodily, body is exactly the same. Mouth is exactly the same as us now, right? So they're identical. They are us, yeah? Anatomically identical. Big brains, small guts, stand up straight, good at long distance running, yeah? No hair, right? No, not so much hair on the bodies, not like this, right? There's big differences. Um, able to make all the speech sounds we can um, 200,000 years ago. Yeah? So they're able to make all the speech sounds we can, and then after that, they get universal grammar. Anyway, any sound you can make, I can make it. Same teeth, same lips, same tongue, same everything, right? Same hard palate, same soft palate, all the stuff in there. Yeah, same voice box, everything's exactly the same. Yeah, and Chomsky's saying after that, language started. Yeah, anatomically identical, they are us, okay? Anatomically identical. And then after that, they get UG. That's not possible, eh? Anyway, exactly the same. 200,000 years ago, exactly the same, okay? Why? Uh, well, probably from 200 million years ago, um, when they're not exactly the same as us, they got big, thicker, thicker teeth and so on. Um, but they're you know, they're not exactly the same as gorillas, but they're more like gorillas than they are like us now. Uh, but they're not the same, right? They cannot make all the speech sounds, not the same lips, tongue, etc. Um, but they're kind of on the way, right? Uh, Homo erectus is about here. Okay. Um, so we're going from the early chimpanzee type ancestors coming up here. We're developing Homo erectus up here and then Homo sapiens up here, right? So they're slowly evolving, their mouths are changing and so on, they're standing up straight. Okay, so it's a very slow, gradual process. And Homo sapiens, 200,000 years ago, has the same speech ability as us. Right? They're all exactly the same. Have you seen then they get grammar? Well, 50,000 years ago, I mean, like, that's strange. Right? I think that's a very strange idea. For no reason, random mutation, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Start speaking after all that. It's not possible. Anyway, so this is basically Mike Tomasello. He says, no, that's nonsense. Chomsky's talking nonsense. It's complete nonsense. Um, it's impossible, right? It's absolutely impossible. Um, we're evolved for speech, fully evolved for speech, we must have been trying to speak for many millions of years before that, for many thousands of years at least. Right? And he says that culture is the key. Our culture is the key to this. Humans got culture. And what gives us culture is this kind of cooperative skill. Right? It's this drive to cooperate is what gives us culture. Yeah. And if you think about the home or the hunting environment, maybe the home environment has more culture than the hunting environment. Just think about that. Um, so human culture started probably millions of years ago. Right? As we come out of the trees, we sort of develop these abilities. Um, and we cooperated to develop culture. So culture is like rooted in our cooperative ability and our cooperative ability develops as we develop culture. So cooperation and culture kind of go together. 
And what do human individuals have that allows this is a question. Why are human individuals able to do this? Why are humans able to cooperate, able to communicate and so on? Yeah. Why do we have culture, I suppose, is, is a question in a sense. Um, how does you know, culture change the individual, for example? Uh, you can compare ape learning and human learning, for example. Right? Um, so apes can see things like us and re remember things. Right? So they do remember, they do see things like us. And they understand why things happen. Yeah. So they kind of do have reason in a way, right? They recognize things and connections, right? They do, they do have a kind of a reason, right? But it's not quite like ours, right? Um, they understand other apes' emotions. They know what other apes are trying to do. Right? They can kind of see this. So they're not stupid, right? They're clever, right? They're very intelligent, actually. Yeah. Uh, but what can't they do? What things can they not do? Um, well, for example, you look at a nine month old baby. Yeah. Tomasello says that what is the difference between animals and us is we have this thing called shared intentionality, right? Shared intentionality. And I think this is um, worth mentioning. Yeah. Shared intention. Think about what that is. Think about kids, right? And it's basically what you're doing. You're doing things intentionally, right? And but you're sharing your intentions. Share the goal, as it were. Uh, we do this better than animals. Uh, we work together for a goal, so we cooperate better. Okay, so this is Thomas Allo's idea, um, and basically co we collaborate or cooperate more. Uh, uh, we work together and while we're working together we're watching other people you're saying about you know facial expressions and stuff like that we're kind of always using our faces checking and giving signs and things like that which um animals don't do as much as you guys said right as you guys said yes um so and then this is kind of important i think um, a one-year-old kid starts showing things to others. It's like, oh, look at this. Ah. <laughs> right, you know, kids do that, right? It's like showing, yeah, okay, look at it. Don't you think this is fun? Do you want to play with this, with me? Right? Um, so, you know, it's like we're really driven to do things together. Showing, you know, working together, cooperating. And if you think about the home environment, the cooking, right, with the women cooking, well, maybe this is important, right? Because a big human thing is you want to share these things, right? You want to share these experiences, right? That's part of what we do. That's why we have culture, because we're sharing these experiences. And so maybe very early ancient human women in the cooking place, in the home um, environment, we're actually sharing their knowledge. And that would require probably better communication skills, speaking. Anyway, one year old starts showing things to others, definitely true. Um, look at this, oh, look at this, Ooh. right? They're doing this, oh, you know that, right? Oh, look, look at that. Oh, it's fun, isn't it? Let's play with this together, kind of thing, right? And uh, kids are incredibly cooperative, right? They want to do things together. And they want to do things together, they get this joint attention. We're both, right? Both focused on the same thing, right? Trying to get things, get everybody focused on the same thing. And animals don't do that very much, right? They just don't do that so much. So idea of joint attention. We're both focused. We're both focused on the same thing. Yeah. Doesn't really happen so much in the animal world. So it's joint tension. Um, show things and you're checking out the other person. You're showing something and checking out the other person. See if the other person is focused. See the, the kid here? 
he's showing something to somebody and he's checking out the person he's showing it to to see if that person is looking at the object is interested in the object yeah um, and so thomas Eller was saying that's that's what's different um and so anyway the basic idea is i'll be I'll a couple more minutes here right the basic idea is chimpanzees are very intelligent right but notice the difference here right um you know they're definitely interested in things just like we are yeah they play with things just like we do yeah but they don't really look at others so much right they're not really checking out other people so much when they're doing it and that may be the big difference and i'll just it won't, it won't take long now they don't point for example i don't like you know say look at that oh, oh look at that look at that right they don't do that and even if you point they don't look yeah so they don't show things to other chimpanzees for example and they're kind of selfish compared to humans um, and if you also look at the chimpanzee's eyes i right, look at the chimpanzees look at my eyes uh, look at my eyes look at my eyes right or look at the chimpanzee's eyes you can see there's a bit of a difference there right and um, we can see eye direction right eye direction you want to see my uh, which way direction i'm looking right and uh, we can see eye direction chimpanzees follow head movement right so for example if i close my eyes and look up the chimpanzee will look up yeah if i just look up without moving my eyes the chimpanzee doesn't look right we can also follow our eye movement and that's a that's a function of um being more focused on joint attention so if you close your eyes and look up for a chimpanzee close your eyes and look up the chimpanzee looks up if you look up with just your eyes a chimpanzee doesn't look human child you close your eyes and look up like that the child just looks at your face and says stupid why are you doing that <laughs> right so humans follow eye movement generally speaking uh, you open your eyes and look with just your eyes right uh, the child follows your eyes and uh, thomas other suggesting that's you know um partly because of our shared intentionality okay i'm going to stop there guys actually because um we can continue with that next time um yeah i mean basically asking you guys ideas about um, the difference between animals and humans uh you're talking about language and emotion reason um the the use of expressions facial expressions and so on those are all good points and it makes a lot of sense um one possibility is is that it's uh, rooted in a kind of fundamental advantage a big advantage that humans have um compared to animals is that we are more cooperative we're more cooperative um and we've got this ability to share our intentions and i think you know you know people if you talk about uh, the place of women uh, gender differences or maybe hospitality and stuff like that um maybe the women in ancient times prehistoric times um the women had these shared intention tensions to maybe share their ability to cook and so on maybe the men also hunting had the same kind of abilities but maybe the home situation the home environment was the place where language was was evolving um in a more serious way than the hunting environment okay well, i'm going to stop there guys any questions or comments first no well i'll come back to that next time or i'll come back to that next time i can ask, I'm ask you some questions about that particularly about shared intentionality and what you think of that so have a little think about that and i'll be asking you next time for your ideas okay then guys i'm going to close it because time is just about up um any questions any comments no okay then guys so i'll stop there then and i'll see you next time bye bye
Bye-bye. Bye bye, guys. Any questions? Comments? No? I think that's going to be that then. Okay, guys. I'll put this up very soon. See you next time. Bye bye.